Right, so we have come out to see this beautiful aircraft. Um, Shall we do a bit of a walk around, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is B505, otherwise known as PEGS. Our, um, well, she's really a Mark 12 Hurricane, but she's dressed up as a Mark 2B, so we normally describe her as a Mark 2B. Um, but we just should point out that she is a glorious Canadian car and foundry one. Yeah, as you can see from the serial numbers at the top. There we go. So I'm, I'm with a, a country woman, shall we say. That's one way of describing it, yes. <laughs> um, so, um, walk around the back. So we've got the rudder obviously here um, with the rudder servo there onto the elevator and the elevator trim. Looking around here and then coming back. All of this being Irish linen covered, which made it so robust during the war. And they could easily patch it up. Um, and then coming around the exhaust stain fuselage as the the team haven't given it a wash yet. Um, as she'd been flying today. But to be fair, it looks it's good, adds, a, adds, it, a, adds, adds a bit of a tina, it, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks it? a little bit. And I have a few sort of scuff marks where certain people have been sat in the front seat of the, uh, the aeroplane. Well, well yeah, let, let, let's be fair, I was a bit excited. Let's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, 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 as, so you should be. <laughs> so you should be. Um, so we've got the gun bays here. These are obviously very important. Make sure that they are locked. Um, because they can cause real problems if someone leaves them open when we take off, mm. um, because they will open against the airflow, which can cause some issues. However, there is really no need for us to be going in and out of the gun ports in, in this day and age. There's no ammunition in there, so yeah. we're not topping it up anymore. Um, ailerons, standard stuff. And then wandering around to our... The business, the business end of the aeroplane, where you've got our lovely nose art for pegs which I'm sure we'll talk about shortly. Um, now, the way you can tell a later Hurricane is, is the oil tank is here um, and you've got the refuel set, um, cap on this on the wing, whereas the early Mark 1s are in the ring route here. Mm -hmm. It's quite a giveaway. And also the radiators, if you can see the radiators. This, having the bigger engine needed a bigger radiator to keep it nice and cool. Yep. Um, Lots of bugs in the oil. Lots of bugs in the oil, it's a bit of a buggy day today. Um, yeah, as I say, yeah. she has been busy flying today. So it's not just my house, it's full of daddy long legs. No, the no, the hangar's full of them. <laughs> the hangar's full of them. Um, uses facts for you. Obviously massive undercarriage doors, which are designed not only to seal the gear up when the gear comes up, but also to help drag the gear down and lock it if there's a hydraulic failure. Um, now you might wonder why these, um, these are all painted yellow. And that's because that's the lock. And the lock is up into the wheel well of the aeroplane. But I can see that in the cockpit. And by the fact it's yellow, it makes it really obvious when that's up and locking in there. So if the lights don't work on the undercarriage um, indicators, um, I can actually just look and I can see that the undercarriage is nicely locked. Yeah, because that was something, it's crawl on here, something I never knew, despite all, is there's the little window. Yeah, so you can see the wheels side. through through the floor there with a the window. And this is where the locks go into here. So it's a lot of thought going into it for the pilot yeah. to ensure that it's there, especially when you're saying when you have a hydraulic problem, the door, the doors are designed to pull the, pull the gear out as well. That's right. And it also gives the Hurricane a very low um, undercarriage and flap limiting speed of 120 mile an hour. Yeah. Um, if you think the amount of load on a hydraulic pump of pulling this, this wheel and this door up, mm -hmm. you know, there's a hell of a lot of force there, which is why it's got such a low limit. Um, we've got a uh, Hamilton standard propeller on it, rather than as it would have done in Canada. Which, let's be fair, De Havilland propeller is a Hamilton standard propeller under license, really, isn't it? Oh, oh there we go. Oh, so this oh, is, this well, is well, what you can only say to. All I would say is that these are much easier propeller to maintain <laughs> and much cheaper. It's, yeah, to maintain the De Havilland propeller. Certainly on our Mark One Hurricane, which has got a De Havilland on it. Um, yeah, and that's obviously wood, whereas this is metal. Mm. Yeah. Um, big radiator, so the centre is the oil, the outer is the coolant. Um, we've got the six guns on it. Not that the guns are in it anymore, unfortunately. 
Um, but as it was a hurry bomber, as Peter Teichman um, did the restoration as a hurry bomber, the option would be to take one of the machine guns out, that one, um, and then you could put the bomb racks mm -hmm. underneath on these pickups here. We have got the bomb racks, um, but we choose not to fly with them on because it adds drag and weight, and we're trying to keep the aircraft as light as possible to give us a greater ability to carry passengers. And you then get into all the fun and games about people arguing about, oh, you've got the carrier, why don't you put a bomb on it? And they don't understand the fun that the right. CAA put through. Yeah, it. so we were sort of in early talks of maybe it'd be fun to put some bombs on it. Um, so maybe this, it might be a winter project, so having a chat about that. <laughs> but they, the CAA oddly get quite funny about um, people flying with bomb racks and bombs underneath here. Now, clearly, we're not going to put a proper bomb on it. It will be a a wooden mock-up of one but yeah. um, it'd be nice to be able to show it off as a hurry bomber because there's so few of them mm. around um, and it shows the the, um, the capability of the aeroplane yes which kept it in service especially the far east right to the end well that's right you know the hurricane served every single theater of the war um, and when you think they were firing them off um, ships in the in the north atlantic i mean it's just incredible isn't it um, and the poor pilots knowing they're going to have to ditch next to a ship and hope they could well i mean it's just terrifying yeah just absolutely terrifying that's, um, but luckily they knew they got extra rum when they got back on board for that. <laughs> I'm not sure it makes it worth it. I certainly wouldn't, yeah, I don't think that would bribe me to do it. It's a one-way trip. You've got to go up and shoot down an FW200 Condor and yeah, then park yourself in freezing cold bloody water and hope somebody stops to That's pick you right. up. Yeah. Right. yeah, there's a big debate about whether you uh, ditch or bail out. Mm. I think the consensus is to bail out. Um, but anyway, um, what else can I talk to you about on it? Um, she does get very hot. I don't know how the guys flew them out in the desert. Well, there's a tank mm. buster variant. You know, we were recently, uh, a couple of weeks back at Paris, a Villa Roche Air Legend air mm -hmm. show, and the temperature was about 35, 37 degrees, and that was really, the aeroplanes didn't like it, and I certainly didn't like it. Because um, you're sitting on top of the radio. Yeah, areas, aren't you? that's right. Um, and I, I, the design is just slightly different to the, the Spitfire, so when it gets hot, it doesn't cool down quite as quickly as what the Spitfire, Spitfire does. Um, so I don't know quite how they dealt with it in the desert. They had slightly modified hurricanes, obviously, for the air intake, um, but I'm not entirely sure about how they kept the coolant cool, really. But they obviously clearly manage it. So. <laughs> well, should we have a look at the inside of it yeah, and see where someone... Absolutely. See, yes, we found our way up the, the, the steps. Fully caster in tower wheel. The tower wheel came off of eBay. The lovely story with that one um, <laughs> is that that was on a wheelbarrow made by a prisoner of war at RF Coltishaw. Um, and so when I found it on eBay and bought it, you know, and I, this is how you find parts. And obviously our maintenance company, the aircraft restoration company, have to go, uh, we're happy with that tire. Mm. Um, but um, when I told the story to the people that I bought it of, they couldn't believe that their wheelbarrow uh, tire was uh, back on a flying hurricane. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That's, um... So I guess we have a look in the back seat to start with. So the canopy is split very, very nicely. Hawker Restorations have done an amazing job of this back seat modification. So um, if you can appreciate, it's a working aeroplane. So um, she's had a busy summer but it's, you know, we try and look after her and it's um, all pretty immaculate in there. Lots and lots of room. People are always surprised by how much room there is in it and also the visibility. Mm -hmm. the, the visibility out the back is almost, I'd say, as good as the back seat of the Harvard. A little bit limited for instruments. You've got an airspeed indicator, but the reality is you don't really need very much more. But you're hoping the guy in the front's doing most oh, Well, that's right. I mean, that's, that's the business end for... For me so if i close that back up that is just so nicely done it's yeah and it, and it makes access in the back cockpit really easy um so i flew 102 year old um this year and i've flown some guys that have gone to the bottom of those steps in a mobility scooter and they still managed to get themselves in and out of the <laughs> airplane it's amazing what happens when the adrenaline starts to pump and they get close to the airplane they've dreamt of flying um so if we slide the canopy back and they collect, and there's the business end of the aeroplane. Um, you have to forgive the quad lock mount on the side there, but <laughs> the rest of it's fairly original. It's um, 
in this day and age, having moving map GPSs for these flights are um, is, is is very important. But um, but as for the rest of it, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to aside of the uh, little GPS sort of things, the rest of it is going to be in there. So you got your. That's right. Yeah. So you've got modern avionics at the top, unfortunately. But again, it's this is a working airplane, so it's really important that we have it um, accessible. Um, but the rest of it's all. It's so all there. Silly question times. Yep. Reason for the stopwatch? Uh, well, it just means I can manage the flight times. It's, got, it's quite useful. We, as Abigail spoke earlier, we have 30 minute flight, 40 minute flight, 65 minute flights. Mm -hmm. um, so if I've sat that running, then I know how far the flight will. Um, Cause, okay, here you go. Do you get carried away when you've got something? Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, I'd never cut, you know, <laughs> I'd go off for hours if I had a choice. But, um, but it's. Uh... Yeah, I, I, like I was saying to you before, I just remember being at Duxford when it was up there for the, the Christmas show with all the other ones. Yeah. It's, it's so tastefully done. If you didn't know what you were looking for, you wouldn't notice the extra bit of glazing and the That's extra... Right. Yeah, well, um, she spent quite a lot of the time this year leading formations of hurricanes around. And a lot of the people don't realise that it's actually got two seats mm. in it. Um, obviously, in an air show, we can't have a second person in it. Yeah. Um, so when we land, people, oh, can I have a look in the front seat? You go, oh, yeah. And they, they're always surprised to find that there's a... There's another seat in the back of the aeroplane. So a passenger gets in on the right side. Yep. Pilot gets in on the left. Left side, yep. Yep. And yep. away you go. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so we're inside. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I do fit. So, which is a good thing. So, what's our sort of procedure here for turning her on? Well, first Not first, that we're going to do that. Well, course, you don't want it to start and then charge across the airfield uncontrollably, so it's no. always handy to set the parking brake. Um, so <laughs> the parking brake is a, a fairly British system on on that lever there. Mm -hmm. And then now between your legs, you can see a brake pressure gauge. So you can see that the main pressure, the top needle, is at about 280, 290 PSI. So that means we've got plenty of air in the system. Mm -hmm. So we then pull the lever, which I'll do as much as I can from here, but you can see the needles are coming up there yep. and saying that it's applying pressure to the brakes. And we set that as a parking brake. Um, we would then turn the fuel onto the reserve tank, um, which is down there. And then we've got a fuel pump, uh, which is just here on the left. And we'd run that for, depending on how hot she is, would depend how much fuel we'd put in it. Okay. So she's already hot today, so I'd probably only give her maybe five seconds worth of uh, fuel. Okay. Right. And then on your right hand side you've got the K gas primer. So I'd unscrew that and then we'd pump that and give it maybe two shots given the temperature that she's currently in and then I'd lock it. And then coming all the way over to the left and you can see there's the throttle but there's also a mixture lever there. Mm -hmm. So I then put the mixture into a fully rich. So all the way forward. All the way forward and make sure because there is two dents there's, there's lean, how do they describe it, um, lean and rich, so we'd go fully rich. And then in the bottom left hand corner we've got a boost and a starter core. It's over there. Yeah. So the spit that's on the other side? Uh, yes it is. Yeah. Yeah, in the spit it's, it's over here somewhere. Yeah, so you'd end up with your arm kind of going across a little bit just to kind of get that to work. So I traditionally push the booster and I can hear that the booster's working in the headset because it's causing a bit of electrical interference mm -hmm. and then hitting the starter. Now that should start the engine. <laughs> so once it goes, then you turn the two mags on. Okay. Which is next to it. Yep. Yeah. Just there, flip them up. And then your attention is very rapidly drawn over to the engine instruments over there. And the first thing you're looking for is the oil pressure to come alive and start to rise. And what happens if that doesn't happen? You shut everything shut down really down. quickly. Shut it down really yeah. quickly. Yeah. On a cold day, you know, you expect it to take a few seconds to come up, but generally she'll come up quite quickly. So that's that one, and then... And the one below, oil, oil PSI. Oil's down there. Yep. So oil pressure there, oil temperature. That's right. And then... Coolant. Yep. Yeah. And then... And what? then we monitor her and warm her up, yep. if necessary. So if it's cold, how long? Well, we're really looking for about 20 degrees on, on the oil temperature. So not, not much? So just not much, no. On a day like today, I think, it's, I think the outside temperature is about 20, so she's nearly there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and about 20 we can start to taxi it. But before we want to go, we're looking for temperatures of the coolant to be about 60 and the ore temperature to be about 40. They're the numbers that we're looking for. Really. And then? 
Um, and, then we, and then we taxi over to the runway, do our power checks, and then take her into the air. So, if we spin round yep. to show, dear listener, that that is the back seat from in here. Yep. Again, you're right. That is a lot of room and a lot of a lot of glazing to be able to check things out. And I guess people getting videos with GoPros and things. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's what these mounts are here that you can see. We can either run a 360 or we can do a GoPro. Most people love a, a, a hero cam <laughs> um, and it's wired into the intercom just to kind of share the experience. Um. See, for me, and I am biased, that's a very pretty wing. It is a very pretty wing. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you're sat looking at an RF roundel with machine guns sticking out of it. I mean, it, it doesn't get much cooler than that. <laughs> it is very, very cool. And the view over the nose is, is lovely. It's, um, yeah, I, I'm, inside of me, I'm making very squee sort of noises. So thank you very much for no letting me I mean, me if through. I close the canopy, it's always probably worth having a look. Just, oh just, yeah. Watch your head, just duck a little bit. And then you see all the, the way they've done the canopy on the Hurricane. These, these planes actually can get in the way a little bit for formation flying. Would you not be using them to also form eight? That you'd be lining them up, or you just still yeah, maybe at... to a degree. But quite often you can lose an aeroplane in in these these centre sections here. So, so it's just something to look at, and it's very unique to the Hurricane, really. Which I guess in a fighter is not exactly what you want. Not really, no. But again, the aeroplane before that were open cockpit, yeah, so, so that does make life a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you were saying. With no gun sight here, it is coming out. I'm yeah, guns, a gun sight would come out a little, protrude into the cockpit a little bit. So, um. fantastic. Um, you're not going to be able to get me out of it now. No, that's right. You can spend more time in there. It's not a problem. <laughs> She's not flying again today. Yeah, sorry. You might have to be pulled into the hangar, but um, <laughs> but it's it's terribly familiar and just a little bit different as well which yeah. is i suppose a mark of a lot of the, the raf aircraft that's at the right time, so. yeah i mean you you're generally always looking at a standard six which is that center yeah. and the raf always put the well, um the engine instruments together on the right hand side so like so so it's yeah i mean the big got you and i'm not is, is the gear and the flap mechanism down the right hand which, side yeah sorry that's what I didn't um, which, ask, which is probably worth looking at so Let's see if I change hands um, and get so that makes it very unique um, yeah, with, with the, for the hurricane so try that. there we go there she is. so it's like a gearbox on a car um, so, so does it return to the center each time you well yeah so in practice that's what you're meant to do so on what I call the fuselage side so the side of the wall that's Over the here. flaps yep. and on the inside is the gear um, so that will activate the hydraulic systems um, and you don't want to leave that pressurised, so you go back into neutral every time you you sorted it out. But um, so is it sort of is it like a push and twist sort of thing? Yeah. So basically, there's a little lever on the side of, down the um, midway down. You can push that in and then slightly. So if you do that, go and you can try it. This one. That's it, and go towards the fuselage side, and then you can go forward. There you go. So that would be selecting the flaps up. Okay. And then once the flaps are up. And the flap indicator is actually in this dark hole down here, which you might be able to see. Oh, there all you way go. Down here, yep. um, obviously, you know that's where you, exactly where you want to be looking when you're coming to <laughs> land. Um, and then you can go back into neutral once it's there. So you just slip it in into the middle. That's it. That's that seems like something that was very good on a drawing board. Yeah. So someone who didn't fly airplanes obviously designed yeah. that. And the, the the needle underneath it is the hydraulic pressure. Um, and a little adjuster on the right hand side would be for the canopy de-icing system. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so that would pump fluid yeah. along these holes here and blow it onto the windscreen. So that'd just be alcohol, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, I don't know quite what they used. Oddly enough, we don't fly in icing conditions anymore, so... Fun, funny that, yeah. Um, but I've yeah. yet to have a canopy that <laughs> freezes it's up. <laughs> it's, yeah, so it's... Yeah. All important. Yes. Let's see if we can... Trigger. Yeah. There it is. Is that, can I twist it? Push can. There we go. In my head, dear listener, I'm going back and back and back and back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's, when we do our uh, dog fights with the 108, or if we're flying out of ducks with, with the bush on, uh, you, you definitely did a dagger dagger <laughs> noises. I, I assure you. Yeah. Okay, let's let's be honest. 
when you go into the dog fights, how serious is it taken with the person in the bush or do they have to give oh, themselves no. Well, up? at the end of the day, you're always trying to look after the passenger. Um, so depends how who we're flying with, but we try and get a bit of a beat of how much G, how much roller coaster sort of um, experience they got in the back. Mm -hmm. Um, and if they're really game, then we can kind of up it, and then it, then it goes into two pilots having an awful lot of fun, and hopefully the passenger, well, always the passenger having an amazing time. But it, dog fighting is a very good way of making someone feel rough. <laughs> so it's really, really important just to have some communication with the passenger. A, a safe word. Yeah, basically a safe <laughs> word. I mean, I flew with a 80-year-old a couple of weeks ago, and we had the most amazing dog fight um, with Martin Abel Mo flying the Bouchon, and. Um, yeah, and I, I thought 80 year olds, and he loved every minute of it. Absolutely loved it, and we were chow, looping, chow chasing, barrel rolls. It was, <laughs> it was fabulous, and he loved every moment of it. Wonderful. Yeah. I taxied back with him, going, "I love you, I love you, I love you." It was a quite, <laughs> quite an experience, actually. Uh, yeah. Well, there we go. I'm just sitting here, fiddling, because you don't often get to fiddle with stuff like that. No, it's very cool. Yeah. Super, Mike. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Now, persuade your wife to come and have a go. <laughs> we'll let you come and have a go.